Good morning, everyone. Today is a very special day. Special because we honor our patron saint of Assisi, Saint Claire. Let us together join in this special assembly and reflect on the values taught by our patron saint to us. Faith and prayer both are invisible, but they make impossible things possible. That, dear children, is the power of prayer that comes from the heart. Let us all join our hands together for the morning prayer. Let us hear the words of our dearest principal, Reverend Sister Arti, on the life of St. Clare. Good morning, everyone. It's a great occasion today. In wishing to discover the human side of a person from the Middle Ages, especially if it is that of a woman like St. Clare, it is very difficult. Yet, it is worth knowing her as she is the patron saint of our institution and her exemplary life motivates us. She was a strong and courageous woman who dared to go beyond the standards of this world and was full of rare qualities of maternal and human affection. She was a beautiful person of love towards God, towards humankind, and for every living creature. Her life and behavior is described by the historians as honest and of good renown. Life of devotion, penance, mercy, and generosity towards the poor inspires millions. Dear children, as we mark the feast day of St. Clare today, let us also follow her footprints in becoming good human beings. It's a rich life full of good qualities of heart and mind that we are going to follow through her life examples. On this day, as we mark the feast day of St. Clair, let us join our hands and sing this hymn in honor of our 
a Deus sempre crer. Dance is creative expression of our innermost feelings. It is the joy of movement and the heart of life. Let us now see what the hearts of our dear class 10 students speak through this hidden language of the soul. The thought of the day is, our body is not that of stone, our strength is not that of iron. Live and hope in the Lord and let your service be according to that reason. Thank you. This thought of the day is, your mind is a garden, your thoughts are the seeds, you can grow flowers or you can grow weeds. Thank you. Have a nice day. We now take a glimpse into the life of St. Clair through a short skit presented by students of 10th A. Saints. St. Saint Clair is believed to have been born on July 16th, 
1194 in Assisi. While there is uncertainty to the exact date of her birth, there is no question to the fact that she was the oldest of three girls of the wealthy Ofriduccio family. There was nothing extraordinary of her early years. Claire, along with her sisters, enjoyed the life of a rich family of the times. Claire's father had made plans for his beautiful daughter to marry a rich young nobleman. But Claire, who had given her heart completely to Jesus as a young teenager, was determined not to marry. I... I am confused. I do not want to marry anyone. I belong to Jesus and Jesus alone. Claire met Francis and they started chatting. Claire and Francis spoke about a lot of things that night. They spoke of the beauty of poverty, caring for the poor and sick, and living like Jesus. She then knew what she wanted to do with her life. On Palm Sunday of 1212, Claire decided to elope, not with the man to whom her family promised her, but to Jesus. Wearing her best dress and jewelry, she went to the Portiancula, where Francis and his followers held lighted candles and sang the psalms. There, Claire Offerduccio promised her life to Jesus. She removed her wealthy clothes and jewels, and embracing poverty, put on a rough gray robe and wooden sandals. Then, St. Francis himself cut off Claire's long and beautiful hair as she renounced the world. Because she was the first woman to follow Francis, and there was no place for her to stay, Francis directed her to live with a group of Benedictine sisters, where she would learn about convent life and living in community. Francis appointed Claire as the women's superior in 1215. They all lived a simple life of austerity, seclusion from the world, and poverty, according to a rule which Francis gave them as a second order. St. Clair and her sisters wore no shoes, ate no meat, lived in a poor house, and kept silent most of the time. Their lives consisted of manual labor and prayer, yet they were very happy because our Lord was close to them all the time. Christmas in 1252, her last on earth, Claire was not well enough to go to midnight mass at the church of St. Francis with her sisters and the friars. She became very lonely and began to cry. Then, realizing that her lonely cell was better lodging than what Mary and Joseph had, she began to meditate on the Christmas mystery. Suddenly, her cell burst into light. Her cell walls were shaken by the sound of a great organ, and she was able to see the Church of St. Francis ablaze with candles. She watched the celebrant ascend the altar and participated at Mass, listening to the beautiful chants. It was like God in his loving tenderness, had brought church to her. On August 9, 1253, Pope Innocent IV declared Clare's rule would serve as the governing rule for Clare's order of poor ladies. Word of their radical life spread through the land. Clare was so renowned for her holiness that the Pope and countless others came to her deathbed. In the midst of her sisters and three friars, she died on August 11, 1253. Monstrance or Pix, to commemorate the time she warded off the soldiers at the gates of her convent with the Blessed Sacrament, St. Clair's Feast Day is celebrated on August 11. Now let us hear what the Hartians from the senior and the junior wing have to say about St. Clair. We become what we love. 
and who we love shapes what we become as said by none other than our precious saint clair a follower of francis of assisi clair founded her own order the poor clairs based on tenets of charity and humility she is thought to be the first woman in the history of the church to write her own rule or guidelines for the religious life of her order the order she founded still exists today and continues to grow there are over 20000 poor class in more than 75 countries worldwide unlike francis friars whose members moved around the country to preach saint class sisters lived an enclosure since an eternal life was hardly conceivable at the time for women their life consisted of manual labor and prayer in 1244 Emperor Frederick II was at war with Pope entered the CC area to attack it Saint Clair had been very ill yet upon hearing of the invasion rose from her bed to do what she could to protect her sisters Saint Clair held the monsters out as a protection for her order after which the troops retreated and left them unharmed on 9th August 1253 two days before her death The honor of Pope Innocent IV confirmed that Clare's rule would serve as a governing rule for Clare's order of poor lady. Her remains were interred at the chapel of Saint Giorgio, while a church to hold her remains was being constructed. Saint Clare was the eldest of three girls from a wealthy overdue Shio family. She is an inspiration to all because even after being born in a wealthy family. she could see beyond the importance of richly things as a adult in place saint clair of assisi pray for us good morning august 11 is celebrated as saint clair's day saint clair of assisi was born into a wealthy italian family but soon left her luxurious life to embrace piety and poverty She was the first follower of Francis of Assisi, and after his death, Clare continued his work and spread her own influence. She died in 1253 and was canonized two years later by Pope Alexander IV. Every day, look into the spotless mirror that is Jesus Christ, and study well your reflection. In that way, you may adorn yourself, mind, and body with every virtue. Love Him totally, who gave Himself totally for your love. we become what we love and who we love shapes what we become if we love a thing we become a thing if we love nothing we become nothing imitation is not a literal mimicking of christ rather it means becoming the image of the beloved an image disclosed through transformation it means we are to become vessels of god's compassionate love for others thank you i am godika today i am going to recite a poem as the trees bloomed so the vine grew she knew the power of prayer she knew he was there she prayed for the stem and desired for her space always what she did was only for the nice let her community of poor lady she was the saint clair of assisi thank you
Good morning, Reverend Sister Arthi, Sister Lynette, my dear colleagues and their children. Saints are those people who change the world for the better, transforming it in a lasting way, injecting the energy that only love inspired by the gospel can arouse. Saints are mankind's greatest benefactors. Today is the feast day of one of the most beloved saints, Saint Claire of Assisi. She is an inspiration, a role model for all of us because she teaches us that things we own are not what is truly important. She was someone who could see beyond the importance of wealth and material possessions. She lived a life of faith, trust, courage and love of God. She teaches us that we need to have faith and courage to take a leap. It made all the difference in St. Clair's life and we are all better for it. She had many lessons that we can learn from. Humility and poverty is something Claire understood. They were intertwined according to her. She worked hard and fought consistently for less because she knew deep in her heart that less is more. She believed in penance and service and felt strongly that if God had done so much for her, how could she not seek to return the same to him? She believed in complete surrender to God and devoted her life to prayer, serving the poor and caring compassionately for the sisters of the convent. So children, let us try to imbibe these lessons in our life and try to become better versions of ourselves. I wish each one of you a very happy feast day.